Jacqueline Mugo is the executive director and CEO of the Federation of Kenya Employers, popularly known as FKE, and she's our guest in the hot seat this hour. Jacqueline, good morning. Good morning. A pleasure to be on this show. Thank you for being here this morning. Uh, quite a number of things to open up today as we look into uh, fetting employers and then getting to know a little bit more about the Federation. But before we get into it, uh, CT welcomes all our esteemed guests with a proverb. Well, our proverbs for the whole of this week come from the country of Uganda. This is a simple proverb. We try to make Thursday proverbs as simple as possible and as easy to understand as possible. Nothing complicated. No elephants climbing trees <laughs> Not and, today. Leopard, and leopards drinking porridge. None of that stuff, okay? A foolish person shouldn't make you foolish. <clears throat> it's a prescriptive proverb, this one. What do you think about it, Jacqueline? I think the prog uh, proverb can be looked at from different perspectives, but it recognizes that they are foolish people. People who are not wise, people who say the wrong things. And um, as an individual facing that kind of person or situation, you should hold your ground. Mm. You should rise above uh, that and not be influenced by it. So you become the bigger person and you, you show the right way, you hold on to your principles. And I think at the end of the day, it goes back to the choices we all make mm -hmm. when faced with different situations. You, you see it at family level, at national level, in all sorts of settings. What do you stand for as a person? And do those values change because you're facing um, some need to it who is not making sense <laughs> <laughs> and, and will you then stand for, for truth because foolishness can be seen in many different aspects but if you look at it at a national context it's the choices we make yeah. and whether we stand for <clears throat> truth and the right thing at all times indeed I love the opening up of it, you know. We just saw it and said, well, <laughs> don't be in the company of foolish people, or at least don't let them, you know, rub off on you. But I mean, mm -hmm. uh, looking at that and what it means to you. Uh, so, Jacqueline, um, introduce us to the Federation of Kenya Employers and what the Federation does and what it's mandated to do. It's my pleasure mm. to be here today and to talk about the Federation of Kenya Employers, which is a 64-year-old organization. We've been here since uh, 1959, mm -hmm. and we came to be as uh, an outcome of the uprising in the early days leading to independence, where Africans began to realize that they were being uh, exploited. Mm -hmm. So the workers were agitating for their rights, and the employers, the few that they were at that time, also came together to form an organization through which they could voice their issues and come together. Mm. We've since morphed into a, a business member organization with very many different areas of service. But we actually simply put a trade union for businesses, mm -hmm. for corporates, mm. as opposed to the trade unions for workers. So we are the voice of employers in this country. The Federation um, can have as its members any entity that's doing business in this nation as long as you're properly registered in law, whether you're a company limited by guarantee or shares, you're a church, mm -hmm. you're a learning institution, all sorts of entities, small and large. Sometimes we're perceived as representing only large business, but actually that's not the case. Mm -hmm. We represent even people who have one employee or two employees. And our main goal is to influence the climate in which business is done, to make it conducive for employers so that businesses can do well yeah. and can create employment. And we also have a wide range of services, organization development, uh, training services, we have research, we have legal um, services to be able to give businesses 
everything that they need to run well. Focusing on the workplace, focusing on people, on the systems and processes of doing work to ensure that the workplace is um, an environment where people can thrive mm -hmm. and where enterprises also perform well. Yeah. So what does this support, I mean, because obviously the support angle comes in, what does this support look like for businesses? And so, I mean, where do they start off? A business is registered today and says, well, okay, how do I navigate these waters of, you know, doing business in Kenya? And uh, do they come knocking on your door and say, look, um, as a federation, provide me with this support that I need? Or how does that work exactly? We say at FKE that all good employers are members of the Federation of Kenya Employers because we stand for fair labor practice and we encourage all entities that are doing business here to join the membership of the Federation of Kenya Employers. And that's very easy. You can do it online. You go just go to our website and show your interest. There's a simple form that you fill. There's a membership fee that you pay. And then uh, you, you become a member of the federation. But you then ascribe to certain tenet, mm -hmm. tenets. We have objectives which uh, require businesses, simply put, to do the right thing and to follow the law. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we try to ensure that those laws are not too restrictive. But once the laws are passed, uh, we, we, we support employers and encourage them to fulfill them. And then we, once you become a member, you then have a host of, of services available to you mm -hmm. by virtue of that membership. Then there are a few services if you want us to represent you in court, um, then you have to pay a small fee for that and also for training. But we look at the whole raft of services that an employer needs and we seek to provide that under one roof as a federation. Mm -hmm. You know, you talk about laws and you categorize them as being unrestrictive. Are there any laws that are not restrictive? All laws are restrictive, but what I was referring to is, is it reasonable? What are the obligations being imposed on businesses? Are they restrictive towards creation of employment and retention of people in jobs? Because the reality is that the, the business regulatory environment is very tough. Our laws are actually very restrictive. They are a, a, a reflection of the constitution of Kenya, which is very, very aspirational. It has everything in it. It's wonderful. But did we calculate the cost of uh, fulfilling, delivering on that constitution? If you look at the Bill of Rights and what the state is supposed to provide, yeah. you then find that it's pushed back to the citizens and the employers. So the labor laws are equally expansive and um, it's good, but it, the cost of compliance is quite high on businesses. But once it's the law, then as a federation, we say this is what the law is. You have to follow it as employers. So we try to have that conversation before it becomes law to be able to tone it down to reflect the realities of the Kenyan labor market mm. and Kenya as a country, a developing country. Mm. And how successful are you in this quest? Not as successful as we'd like to be, because if you look at our current laws, one of the things we did not want to have there was to make it very difficult for employers to separate from employees, mm -hmm. which is not a good thing, but when it does have to happen, then you should allow those two individuals uh, to manage that process. But right now, it, it almost becomes a hearing that you conduct at the workplace with witnesses and evidence which, which you record. So it's a legal process as opposed to a contractual process. So the, the push for change uh, was good, but I think we went a little too far. So now we are realizing, oops, to call a strike, you just give seven days. Right. And after those seven days, then that strike is protected. And that's that's not realistic mm. in the context in which we operate. Especially if you're trying to get the other party to act in a certain way, isn't it? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So do you then also play a hand-holding role or maybe a big brother role to these businesses in terms of best practice to make sure that there are certain things or there are certain standards at the barest minimum that these organizations are keeping uh, to remain under the federation, but also just for general best practice in the country for businesses. Do you then step in from time to time to do a check of what's going on or is that not within your mandate? Yes, we do. We do a lot of hand-holding. Mm -hmm. we, we do a lot of advice. 
and we do a lot of mediation between employers and workers and trade unions. We have basics which employers have to comply with because we believe that as an employer you should be a fair employer mm. and and what constitutes fairness is actually set in law and in the objectives of the federation so we see to it that employers know what's happening in the rest of the world because we do have international networks through which we are exposed to the best practices so one of the things we do is to encourage that we help employers formulate policies for instance there's been a very big issue about inclusivity and diversity mm. and violence and harassment at work so what avenues do employees have to complain if there is a case of harassment or violence? Is your, is your enterprise open to these kinds of issues right. so that they can be discussed and make it possible for people uh, to be treated well? So mm -hmm. it's very important to us as a Federation of Kenya Employers that our members um, comply with the best practices and also comply with the laws and go beyond that. And, and put in place a workplace environment where there's health and safety, but there's also openness and fair treatment of everybody. Do you ever hear cases from individuals, I mean, so let's paint a picture here, where somebody knows that an, an organization is a member of uh, the Federation and there may be a situation that has occurred and decide to come to the Federation and complain about one, two, three. Do you check on that business? Are you in a position to hear out from individuals or would you refer them to somebody else? We get a lot of employees who come, they write, they call, they come physically to the Federation and ask us to represent them. Now, we represent businesses, but when an employee comes, we seek to find out, so who's the employer and what's the issue? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, if need be, we involve the trade union or we contact that enterprise. But you'll often find that these employees who come to us are actually not from member companies of mm -hmm. the Federation. We then involve the Ministry of Labor to be able to handle that issue, to see to it that these uh, person is given a fair hearing mm -hmm. and an opportunity to have their case heard. But Kenyans sometimes are not very clear what, where, where do you go? Mm -hmm. So when they land at our doors, we don't, we don't uh, throw them out. But there have also been cases where we talk to enterprises, a few that are not members, mm -hmm. who don't want to do the right thing, who basically then end up in court. Mm -hmm. What does FKE do to assist members who in the event or the unlikely event of a downturn in the economy have to shut their doors mm -hmm. and with that comes this raft of people who are no longer employed and there follows mm -hmm. a thousand one other issues that's a very sad reality that we are seeing now uh, even before COVID, we were seeing an increase in the number of redundancies, mm. and the law actually addresses that. There are provisions of what should an employee who's being let go, not because they've done anything wrong, but because the enterprise cannot uh, continue to keep them in service because it's in distress or the job has changed. We then ensure that that employee is paid the employer then has some obligations to pay, and that is actually prescribed in law. There's a minimum you pay. But there are situations where enterprises collapse and they don't even have the money to pay those dues. It then becomes a very difficult scenario because that enterprise goes into a liquidation mm -hmm. and the employees' benefits are not uh, protected. There's a level you, that they are paid, which is a very small amount of money. But by and large, normally they are paid off and um, at the rate of 15 days for each completed year of service at the very least you're paid your pension you're paid notice but it's hardly ever enough uh, for someone to to start afresh but there's that minimum that is provided for in law so we do training we prepare um, policies we give advisories and in many situations we also manage that process alongside the enterprise and the workers why well, i ask this question is well, I'm thinking of an organization that is in distress. They've been your members. And sometimes whatever stress they are undergoing is beyond their capabilities. But yet within your membership, you have people who probably specialize in solving problems such as the one that particular entity may have. Mm -hmm. Are there ways in which you can have a, a symbiotic way of assisting a member 
rise out of the doldrums and define themselves. Yeah? If it's a financial challenge, then it's it's problematic because as FK we don't have the finances. We there's a joke that employers' organisations are very poor organisations, are <laughs> very rich individuals, mm. and trade unions are the opposite. <laughs> 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 so <laughs> we give the advice, we give the, we walk you through the legal uh, quagmire of what you do was the right thing. We can connect you to financing if that's needed, but then you you have to be able to service that loan if you're already in distress. Then that's a problem. But there are situations where we look at the obligations the employer has. How many employees do you have in service? What are their terms? There have been agreements with unions to reduce salaries so that we keep everybody, but everybody takes a 20% cut mm -hmm. uh, so that nobody loses their job. Should the enterprise do better in future, then that could be paid or you just forgo it. So there are various options so that redundancy and letting go of people is always a last resort. Because these are skills you've developed. These yeah. are people you've worked with. And you know that if you're letting go of someone, then you're actually affecting very many other lives. So that's mm -hmm. always a last resort. But when it has to happen, then we hold their hand. You know what comes to mind, eh? I look at the history of some of the world's largest enterprises. Eh? And how... Yes. At the onset of uh, that enterprise when they were starting off and they probably didn't have the sort of money that was required to pay the employees some offered equity there are histories of companies that were actually going down they were at the point where they were actually going to shut down and they talk to the employees and say folks this is the situation that we're in mm -hmm. can we agree that in lieu of this we give you equity i'm simply saying that we sometimes assume that when a company has a problem that of necessity is one of liquidity. Liquidity mm. sometimes, or the problems of around liquidity are a manifestation of a problem that is not necessarily liquidity. Okay? It could be just yes. poor management. Okay? Now, when you had an organization that has this huge reservoir of talent in terms of the organizations and the diversity of it, I'm simply thinking, there are people who have the skills to be able to say, look, perhaps you ought to look at this thing differently. Perhaps you ought to change your business model. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you ought to partner with somebody else. Who may, meaning, look for ways that go beyond just money, but again from the position of the membership. That is what was going on through my mind. You're very right. We have an organizational development wing that offers consultancies. We do strategy reviews. Before we agree that, yes, this is a case for redundancy or shutdown, we'll have looked at all the options and done a diagnostic of the challenges the business is facing through. Mind you, this is a member that you've been working with, so mm. it won't come out of the blues unless they've been quiet about it. So you look at the situation the company is in and you try to get to the bottom of it. So what's the real problem? Usually, if it's not a financial issue mm. or a bad a management decision, it's relationships where the owners of the business have fallen out and it's beyond salvage. <laughs> that then becomes very difficult because we, we do mediation where those being mediated are willing <laughs> to review, to come together, you know, and, and go through. The, the hurdle they're facing. So it's, it's the personalities that normally make it very difficult to have that kind of change. But if it's just a managerial issue or a challenge that was unforeseen, then yes, we can help organizations overcome that. Sometimes they have too many people, they're looking at a structure that's not working, mm. a strategic decision that was wrong. And so you do a diagnostic to help them uh, really clarify what the issue is mm -hmm. and then we come up with solutions and some even within our membership we have people we partner with to offer these support services to organizations so that before an enterprise collapses which is very painful for us everything possible will have been done to salvage them the situation okay yes. you talk about putting people at the core of businesses and that's not just for the federation but that's also for all organizations under the federation as employers making sure that people at the core of the business what exactly does that mean for a business to understand okay put people at the core okay 
What do you mean by this? Yes, there's been a lot of talk about that, putting people at the core, people are the most important assets, but is it reflected mm. in how you treat them? So w we have uh, an award, the Employee of the Year Awards, that actually celebrates that. That we have a category that just looks at the people element. What are the job descriptions they have? What are the reporting lines? What training opportunities do you give your people? Do you celebrate successes when they do well? How do you correct people when they don't perform, when they do the wrong thing? Mm. Do you walk alongside them um, to help improve their skills? Do you understand the skill mix that you have? So that when Jackie is performing a certain way and struggling in an area, you probably find that that's not her area of strength. So mm. have you put people in the right jobs with the right skills? And are you managing them in a way that enhances their productivity? So it's the investment in the people, the development of the people, mm. the celebration of the successes at individual and corporate level that's important so that people see that, yes, uh, good performance is rewarded and also how you punish mm. uh, wrongdoing. When you've done everything you can as an employer, as a leader, and this person is still doing the wrong thing, you must also... Uh, deal with that to be able to send the right message uh, to the rest of the, of the workers mm. that the right thing is what is required. Looking at that best, best practice and insisting on that best practice then brings about some awards, um, Jacqueline. And where did that idea come from to award employers who are actually instilling these things that you talk about as a federation? We realized um, that employers are always blamed for one thing or the other, or there are lots of demands that are pushed their way on a daily basis. And there was really no one sitting back and saying, so what value do these employers add to the Kenyan market? Who's celebrating the good things they do? So as their organization, the Federation wanted to celebrate mm -hmm. the contribution of employers uh, to the success of this country and uh, to encourage them to open themselves to competition, to learn from one another because one of the things we want to see is our members coming together. Mm -hmm. um, the Bible says that iron sharpens iron, but one man sharpens another. So we wanted these corporates to sharpen one another, but it's, it's a brave thing to do to open up your enterprises to scrutiny, mm -hmm. to see what you're doing. So it's an awards that celebrates uh, the best employers in this country. So we've themed it honoring best employers. Mm. And we, we, we then um, look at evidence to show what they're doing. And we uh, celebrate that in an event called um, Air Galadina. Mm. So there are certain things that you insist on, leadership and governance, corporate performance, innovation and productivity. What are the measures that you then say, okay, if these are the, th the categories, how then do you look and say, well, this person is actually leading or this organization is making sure these are done? How would you see a, f uh, a, a manifestation of those um, issues to now say, yes, this person then qualifies? The assessment is done for us by an independent uh, consultant um, whom we hire competitively because as the federation we do not want to be the ones determining which is the best employer and which one is not because these are our members and we want to maintain that relationship so it's been done by professionals it's the corporates themselves mm -hmm. that give the evidence of good performance so you just go online we give you a link and you then do the assessment you decide which of the eight categories you want to take part in our encouragement to employers is to take part in all part in all the eight categories so that you learn uh, where you're weak. And there are very clear parameters. If you're saying that you're good in innovation and productivity, we're looking at how you support your workforce mm -hmm. uh, to perform. What measures have you put in place to recognize innovation by employees? And uh, how does that contribute to the overall corporate performance? So there are specific elements in each of these eight categories that you then uh, give evidence of, we look for documentation. So after you enter and indicate w what you think uh, your good areas are, 
the team then comes to confirm that what you said is true, you show the evidence, uh, you show the policies, you show your reports, your performance reports, if you're a public body, then your audited account. So there's a very clear and detailed process for assessment. We then award the leaders in each of the eight categories mm -hmm. and then the overall top three, the overall winner, and that should be a corporate that took part in all the eight categories. And then uh, we have a first runner-up and a second runner-up. Do you get feedback from your membership as to what it is they think of this particular award ceremony? Yes, we do. They love it. Mm -hmm. um, those who've taken part uh, love the award. There are those who are scared. Mm. And <laughs> I've not taken part. It's been surprising. Some corporates reach out to say, why aren't you taking part? And they, they've been, so far, um, not been open to doing that. But they then look at the results because we publish for you specific a specific report, if you ask for it, that shows you where you did well and where you didn't well, mm -hmm. do well. It's also the overall report that actually companies or organizations that didn't take part can look at and see, so how did uh, uh, BAT win? Because BAT has won. How did Safaricom win? And this year we also introduced a category for the small and medium enterprises because they felt this is too big for us and we'll be looking at that. Mm -hmm. So we also want to see the SMEs who are a very large segment of the Kenyan labor market to take part and also to be, to be awarded. So this year we actually have a very good problem mm -hmm. in that even for the dinner there are more companies wanting to come than we have space for. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that we're looking at the scenario now in the country yeah. and people are just looking for some way of celebrating. Uh, yes. So, I mean, it's, it's, there's been a three-year hiatus and coming back and doing it in 2023. What then, I mean, obviously here, uh, you've given rise to that, that um, companies, people are looking for an opportunity to come out and celebrate, you know, and maybe in some cases vent and, you know, just let out maybe some of the frustrations that have happened, especially for business and the economy uh, over time. What should they expect from these awards as employers who are, who are you know, who've told you that we want to come? What should they expect tomorrow? They should expect to to see very clear evidence of what it takes to be the best employer in Kenya. How do you then enhance learning and development in each of these eight categories? We will be sharing with them what made company X stand out. Why did they win? Mm. And why didn't you win? Though you took part. And we encourage that taking part, even if you didn't win. Mm. So they learn that. And they'll celebrate uh, with the winners. And hopefully next year, uh, they'll take part. We're also just wanting to give employers a good time to celebrate mm. and sit back and say, look, we've been declaring redundancies, we've been fighting about the laws and the taxes, but can we just celebrate uh, the role of enterprise so that together we can recharge and re-energize to finish the year well and then also prepare for next year. Mm. So for us, it's a celebration, it's a sharing of, of good of, of good learnings, good experiences, and also hearing from the consultant that did the assessment, yeah. what the experience was as they visited various enterprises. It, it was an awesome experience, how they were received. Uh, we've been amazed at, at, uh, at FK at, at how open our members are mm. to be scrutinized. And I think that's what we'll be celebrating tomorrow. Yeah. I, I want to then also say, look, so obviously um, an, an entrant or participant who wins tomorrow, you know, they've been successful across many different parameters. How would the federation have contributed to their success? And I'm not just talking about, you know, winning an award tomorrow, but obviously there are very many events that led to this organization being successful. What would have been the federation's contribution towards that success over time? We would have contributed in very many ways. First, in help, helping them identify the talent that they have in service, because it's people who deliver on the corporate plans. So the people that they have, we 
either helped recruit them or we helped to build their capacity in certain ways. We helped that organization come up with performance uh, measures. How do you measure the performance of your workers? What, what system do you use? A lot of companies use the balanced scorecard. How do you reward uh, superior performance? And so we'd have helped them put in place the people, the systems, the processes, uh, the policies. We've helped them resolve issues when they've had workplace issues because sometimes there are disputes, there are disagreements between workers and employers and they come to us. Mm. When you can't manage this person or the union is giving you a hard time, you're looking at employee participation, there's resistance. So we help build that workplace culture. We'd have been working alongside this company for many years, even before the awards and that's why they trust us to do mm. this uh, to be able to assess them and uh, and still remain members of the federation especially those who don't win uh, so it's a trust issue i believe and a friendship a partnership that has been built over years mm -hmm. on matters of labor laws would you say that you are content with the participation and the influence the organization has been able to exert in the process of making, enhancing, or changing these laws? When I came to the Federation to take up uh, the position I now hold, mm. Mm. my first assignment was actually to, to sit in the task force that was just about to adopt these new labor laws in 207. And I was shocked by some of the contents of those labor laws. As I was asking if he, how could you allow this to happen? But you see, it's a negotiated process. So I knew there would be challenges because those labor laws are very strict. Uh, they have provisions there which are good, but I didn't think we were ready as a country. So I, I knew it was going to be challenging. And as FK, we did that. But, well... Um, it was an agreed document, so we knew we had to prepare enterprises to comply. And that's what we've been doing. We're now talking about reviewing those labor laws over 10 years down the road since 2007. There have been experiences where even trade unions are having issues, employers and the government as well. So we want to review them holistically to see which areas need improvement, like COVID came and we were not ready for it. There was nothing mm. in the labor laws about what we called act of God, something totally unforeseen that hits both the worker and the employer. And the initial reaction from our legislators was, employers cannot terminate people, you must keep them in employment, pay them full salary. And you said, but the enterprise itself is dead. So how do we do this? So we, we will be reviewing them together and hopefully um, tweak the areas that need to be uh, tweaked and improved and also look at the realities of the labor market today. Mm. Things like working from home, how do you manage that? How do you manage employees off-site? How can Kenya um, embrace that idea of someone not being in front of you working in an office, but you giving them uh, freedom to work wherever they are and still having the system and the processes to be able to assess their performance and for them to deliver the eight hours or so mm -hmm. that you expect on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Do you in any way collaborate with the trade unions? I ask the question because if we're going to talk about labor laws, employers and unions, perhaps would yes. be best advised to have some conversation so that even when those laws are enacted, Yes. Some of the contentious issues that might have arisen because the laws were probably sorted out in the process of negotiation as to what works best for both parties. You're very right. Surprisingly, we actually have a very good relationship with trade unions. We have to because we call ourselves social partners. That's the structure mm. in the world. Mm. It is expected that uh, trade unions, workers under the ages of government will work through social dialogue mm. and that we are committed to. We have a document called um, the Industrial Relations Charter, mm. which actually governs this relationship. And uh, the Central Organization of Trade Unions, FKE, and the Ministry of Labor honor it. Mm. It faces challenges, it gets a bashing. Whenever employers uh, take a hard stance, uh, it becomes a difficult conversation. But both, all three parties are committed because on any given day, you'll find a trade union in FKE chairing a collective bargaining agreement. We chair the, the, the meetings. Yes. Trade unions come, employers come. And that means there's trust in the capacity of the Federation to be an, an independent, impartial arbiter 
in this process very often of course we have challenges we have disputes we have disagreements uh, i've been put in very difficult positions on labor days and mm. you know so you take the bashing yeah. but there's commitment <laughs> there is <laughs> to the relationship you mentioned something that obviously is a contentious <laughs> issue and just labor day i mean usually when the 30th so the <laughs> the 30th of april people go to bed wake up on the 1st of may and the question normally is all right what's going to happen and then the minimum wage story comes in and there's a lot of complaints that quite a number of employers are not even meeting that minimum wage and uh, employees then you know obviously will begin to ask what happens to that what role does FKE play in kind of at least ensuring, and I mean, I'm looking at the, uh, these awards and saying some of the things that you ask is best practices. Does that fall in line with that? An organization who's making sure they're paying at least the minimum wage and for complaints about, because we do know that a lot of people who should fall within that minimum uh, wage bracket, unfortunately don't, uh, they're not. Where do you come in there? First, let me say it's very unfortunate that Labor Day has become a discussion about statutory minimum wages. Yes, yes. It should not. Mm. It is a day to celebrate the good work done by workers, by employers and the government as the policy holder. So we've, we've been fighting that for a long time. Can we allow Labor Day just to be a day for celebrations yeah. and not make it about statutory minimums? Yeah. There are bodies that are set up to help advise on statutory minimum wages. We have the National Labor Board Agricultural Wages Council just for agricultural sector to look at it. So how has it performed? formed can we improve the minimum wage by what level then there's a national minimum wage these bodies are supposed to meet way before labor day and that decision made and uh, agreed on outside labor day so that's an unfortunate scenario that uh, we've been trying to break and haven't succeeded fk plays a very strong role in wage determination in this country as part of these bodies that i'm talking about they're supposed to be research done by the government um, to advise on the parameters of wage determination. We have to look at the impact on industry, the impact on the informal sector, which is very huge in this country, before you decide to increase the minimum wage. And the reality is that Kenya's minimum wage is the highest in the region. Mm. So we've been saying it's just an entry point. You know, because if an enterprise can pay more, then they can mm. through negotiations. So uh, we need a different conversation around that. And this is one of the things we've engaged the current administration on. Can we facilitate these wages councils to do their job so that it is not a fight uh, on Labor Day? But we believe in fair remuneration. And once that statutory minimum wage is passed, mm -hmm. then as private sector, we actually honor it. Now, the, the government is actually the largest employer. So when they increase the minimum wage, I always say, but actually, you'll be the hardest hit. Yeah. And can, can industry meet that minimum wage? Because it means that a domestic worker, employing a domestic worker in their house, have to pay this minimum wage. Yes. That's what we always forget. Mm. So can Kenyans... Um, adhere to it mm. at all levels. Mm. <laughs> but Jackie, you know, when you think about it, these domestic workers also have domestic workers. Yes. So, what do they pay their domestic workers? Where does the snowball stop? Yes. <laughs> you know? That's what I'm asking. Yeah. So you have to put it at, at a level which is capable of compliance by yeah. everybody. Yeah. You know, the you mentioned the government being the largest employer. I have to ask, so what role do they play in FKE? I mean, their government, we understand. But the workforce that is under their purview is huge. The government is the, sets the policy. Yeah. So we influence, we seek to influence that policy. We actually, as FKE, represent quite a lot of the public sector. The parastatals can be our members. Mm -hmm. And quite a number of they them can. are. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And they are. Very many of them are members. So we work together very closely with the government through the Ministry of Labor. In setting those policies, there's always a tra there should always be a tripartite team Mm. That is looking at it and telling government, look, if you pass this, this is the impact on employers. But we need to listen to each other better to be able to come up with laws and pol policies that are not too heavy on either side. Mm. You know, the thing is, government is led by elected politicians. Yeah? Now, there's always this need to do what is popular, not necessarily practical, but popular. This matter of the minimum wage, I have a view. 
I actually think that every time on Labor Day, when we were told that the minimum wage has been increased by a certain percentage, what the government has ended up doing is reducing the value of that shilling that they've given the worker. Because mm -hmm. if you have that amount of money, in terms of just amounts and figures, do they take into consideration what that money actually does or what it, it actually can do? Because, again, if the minimum wage is what? Is it 15,000? About 15,000, yeah. Okay. yeah. And you give me, what, 10%? That's 1,500. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. What that does really change? I mean, the cosmetic aspect of it, one sees the optics, one understands you are saying you're doing something, but do you really do something? The question is this. When one looks at labor laws, when one looks at employers, what else should employers do beyond always haggling about wages to ensure that the quality of life that the people who fall into the category of employees actually mm -hmm. get that quality of life? Because an increase in salary does not necessarily equal an increase in one's quality, quality of life. life. You know, that's a very valid point, and that's actually one of the main contentions and main issues FK has been trying to advance on Labor Day and outside it. it our role is not just uh, about wages. Because it is our strong belief that if we looked at the cost of bas basic commodities, if we spent the taxes that Kenyans already pay for the amenities that they need, transport, mm -hmm. you know, if you've been to other parts of the world, the transport is reliable and affordable. If you look at healthcare, you can go to a public uh, hospital or dispensary, as we used to do when we were young. Mm -hmm. Here in Nairobi, mm -hmm. you could walk into a hospital, in a dispensary in Jericho, and get treatment. And get drugs. And get drugs. Yes. Not uh, real drugs, mm. not generics. Yes. You, you could go um, to any hospital and get their treatment. Schools, what's the cost of education? Because if you give me a 10% increase, but the cost of living goes up twice yes. that, yes. then you've actually eroded uh, my my capacity mm -hmm. to purchase. So this this is a conversation we need to have because I remember my mom used to earn 600 shillings many, many years ago, never mind when. <laughs> but we lived better than now because bread was 35 cents. You know, wow. mm. so what is the cost of basic commodities? Mm. Can we look at the costs of living and the drivers of that as opposed to pushing uh, for wage increases, uh, which locks more people from entering uh, bracket, into employment, yes. the employment bracket, because corporates can't take them. And then it's a vicious cycle mm. because we, we, we believe that wages cannot chase um Goods and services. Mm. Goods and services. <laughs> it has to be the other way. We've around. got it wrong, so yeah. we need to change that. Mm. So, as we, you know, as employers gather at uh, Safari Park tomorrow, um, then you know, obviously, there will be winners, and then there will be those who can have the hope of being winners in the future. What would you hope for um, an atmosphere of work and business and employers and employees in this country, even after they've been awarded, and then looking forward to the next time? Tomorrow, as we celebrate the Employer of the Year Awards as employers in this country, we want to look at the eight areas of leadership and governance, corporate performance, innovation and productivity, responsible business conduct, looking at leading um, enterprises through learning and development, through an environment that allows people to thrive, looking at inclusiveness and diversity and the HR policies and industrial relations mm. that impact the workplace. We want harmony at the workplace, productivity at the workplace. And tomorrow we just want to celebrate uh, those who are leading the park in doing well in these areas and encouraging those who may not win tomorrow to target winning in uh, the next one in 2024. Mm. So um, tomorrow should be a win-win for everybody. Even those who don't lift that trophy uh, will be winning because mm -hmm. they're there to learn and they, uh, they've opened themselves up to scrutiny. Most of those who are coming tomorrow are those who've taken part mm -hmm. and have been, have done well in one way 
or the other. And because of these eight categories and the fact that there are three winners in each, there are chances that very many corporates will be celebrated tomorrow. Mm. And that's what we're looking forward to. So let's come together as employers and have a good time and also be able to spur one another to better performance going forward. Mm. Do you see this these awards, I mean, even as we come to the end of this, do you see these awards as a spur then for better business environments, better work environments, moving into the future for somebody to say, actually, you know what, let me work at what I can, not just so that I can win an award, but actually make it a better environment. You're absolutely right. This is a catalyst mm -hmm. for better performance, for commitment to consistent improvement, and for commitment to learning from the rest of the corporates uh, what you can do better mm -hmm. going forward. So actually, it's an encouragement to all employers that where you are now, you can do better tomorrow. And you do that by learning from the rest of the employers in this country and celebrating the work that businesses do to drive this economy forward. Mm. So for us, we'll be celebrating all employers in Kenya as FKE. Fantastic. Jacqueline Mugo is the Executive Director and CEO of the Federation of Kenya Employers. Thank you for being here this hour. I mean, it's been illuminating for sure. And then giving hope in terms of what business can actually do and what employers can actually do in the future. The EYA Employee of the Year Awards take place tomorrow at the Safari Park Hotel on the 6th of October. That's 6th of October. And uh, awarding those who have upheld, who've kept, who've initiated best practices as employers. And uh, it will be interesting to see who comes out on top and spurring on a great business and employer environment into the future. Jacqueline, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. And great it's to have conversations with you and looking forward <laughs> to future conversations yes. that we will have. Thank you so much. This is The Situation Room, the only way to start your day.